Hey folks, this is Mr. Chicken, and uh, today we're going to talk about corpsing. Now, I know we've done zombie heads before, but uh, now uh, I've got a project that is going to need a full zombie body. And um, it's going to be a lot of work, but um, it's a lot of fun too. And I think uh, you'll see a lot of possibilities with this technique. So, um... Let's get going. And today's project is cute little zombie trick-or-treater with a pumpkin. To make the armature for the skeleton, uh, I used uh, sort of slightly smaller versions of my own measurements. Um, mark them onto three-quarter inch PVC pipe, and uh, then you just uh, cut the pieces and put them together with PVC connectors. Um, I like three-quarter inch. Uh, you could use one inch if you want it to be more stable. Now, to put them onto a base, I just got a piece of uh, plywood, and then these connectors and plates uh, will make a nice way to attach it. And uh, you can see I had screws that were too long, so if you just smack them off, they'll uh, break to the right size. So you see I just have this uh, metal flange and then this little piece screws in and that becomes a coupler to attach the leg to. Um, now you can also stake it into the ground if you're on grass but um, this makes for a pretty good solution for anything else. Now the head, um, I've got a whole video on doing zombie heads but you can see I just have a plastic skull and I stuck a PVC in for the neck and some balls for the eyes and uh, there you go. This is uh, how we start and then I take a heat gun and start bending the joints. Now the reason I do this instead of using connectors for all the joints is that this lets me get one uh, really custom positioning for each uh, bend and also it um, I think makes for a stronger piece in the end because um, it's one piece for the arm. Um, but the ones that are connected uh, I just used a little uh, PVC cement to glue those securely together. Now for the palm of the hand I'm just using uh, you know a little bit smaller than the size of my hand um, out of cardboard and I'm going to do the same thing for the foot and the shoulder blade and also the sternum. Now for the fingers I use this wire that you can buy uh, next to the rebar at the hardware store and I'm just going to bend it up and down the length of each finger with plenty of extra at the wrist uh, based on uh, tracing of my hand and then I'm going to take my drill and uh, twist together each finger. Now you have to be a little careful when you're doing this because if you're not paying attention it'll get a little out of control but you can see I put the one end into the drill and then carefully securely grab it with the pliers and then whoop there it goes but uh, once you get the whole hand then you can just hot glue that onto the cardboard palm and there you go. Okay, so here's the tedious part. Uh, for each rib, you want to roll up some sheets of newspaper. Now, uh, usually two sheets stacked works pretty well for a rib, and three sheets will do pretty well for the uh, extra bones in the arms and legs. So um, you just kind of go corner to corner and roll it as tight as you possibly can and uh, tape the end when you get it there. So uh, I think I ended up doing about nine rolls for the ribs and then one, two, three, four total for the uh, arms and legs. Uh, you know, it's not my favorite part, but it's kind of satisfying in a way. So you can take the ribs and hot glue them to the sternum in the middle so that um, you basically have a rib cage that's ready to pop on to the body. 
I like to bend the middles of the ribs as you put them on so that they kind of uh, are encouraged into a little bit of a droop. Um, and you can see I uh, just uh, use masking tape to hold the ribs around the spine and um, that does a pretty good job. Um, you just go one by one and kind of adjust the sizes until it looks right. Then you can hot glue the shoulder blades and uh, use the three layer newspaper tubes as uh, this little bone right there on your forearm. Um, so what I typically will do is bend it on both ends so that it kind of acts as a spacer to hold that just a little bit away from the larger bone and then you can just uh, use masking tape to hold that together and hold it onto the PVC. Now uh, what I'll do is take half sheets of newspaper and crumple them up and twist those around the ends of each limb uh, to create the little knobbly bony bits. And uh, again, just masking tape holds those on pretty well. Uh, the pelvis, eh, I don't know. I always have trouble with that. Um, I kind of come up with a new method every time, and uh, this time it was sort of a tube of cardboard. Yeah, it worked. Uh, here I'm just uh, finishing up the knobbly knees um, with more twisted, crumpled half sheets of newspaper. What you uh, can kind of do is try to taper it up into the bone and make it wider as it gets to the joint, if you can. Um, but, uh, you know, you can actually kind of do a certain amount of adjusting when you get to the mache process, which is where we are now. Um, I like to do the head separately from the body. That's where people are really going to be looking the most. And... Um, it's nice to be able to sit down and focus on it. Um, I have a whole video just on corpsing your zombie heads, so I'm not going to get into too much detail here, but um, you can see um, I did some little pencil outlines of where I thought uh, things would land, and um, you just kind of go along and try to give it some character. Now, once you've got the head done and I hot glued it back onto the neck, uh, I'm just going along and doing my chicken mache process to the whole body. It's really simple. Again, I, I've, I've talked about this before in another video, but um, it's just uh, latex house paint. And uh, you get it uh, tinted the sort of darkest color that's going to be in your character. Um, because this is going to act as sort of the shadows when we do our paint job. Um, and you just dip each each uh, sheet of paper towel and twist it, droop it, hang it, pinch it. Uh, you just kind of make it look cool, and um, you'll get the feel for it pretty quick. You can see after the main part dried, I laid it back a little bit so that the um, larger areas like the neck and the stomach would droop in and sort of give you that sucked-in mummy look. And then uh, I actually ended up tying up the neck with some string to help it uh, stay up on the chin. Now, we can get into dry brushing. So uh, I'm just going to take that base color and just progressively add yellow and eventually white to that in layers and layers of uh, just a little bit at a time, building up the high points um, overall and then finally to the uh, individual wrinkles that you kind of want to make pop. And uh, as you go along, it really starts to add a lot of character. It's, uh, you're basically getting free detail um, from all the texture that you put on with those paper towels. And uh, it ends up being pretty cool. And uh, once that's done, then I can go in and start doing details. Um, I do kind of an off-white for the eyes very carefully and the teeth uh, I made a little more yellow and um, you know I like to kind of keep these sort of loose and impression-y um, little pinks around the eyes 
and uh, some watery brown to uh, make those teeth a little nasty looking. And then we can do the super fine details, which uh, here is just the pupils. Um, it's kind of tricky, so I like to pencil in where I think they should go first. Um, and then uh, just kind of take your time and uh, do it gradually, get to the thickness of the, uh, the circles that you want, because um, it's easy to just uh, do it slow and make tweaks as needed. Um, but uh, here he's just got little rings of black, which uh, will look nicer than that when we're done. And then we do the polycrylic satin finish clear coat. Um, this is uh, from the hardware store, and uh, it's really going to help things pop. Last thing on the zombie is a uh, five minute epoxy over the eyes and the teeth. I don't recommend using a Q-tip, it's kind of messy. Wow, we're already into finishing touches. So um, I just am repainting um, a foam pumpkin here. You can see I added a little bit of yellows to it. And uh, then I drew in with a pencil where I wanted the face to be. And uh, then I'm just uh, painting it on. What I decided to do with this was to anchor it to the wrists because that's the PVC and that's gonna be the strongest part of the hands, so um, rather than the hands holding it, it's just going to be wired in through the pipe and uh, tied off like that. So uh, it actually ends up being pretty secure this way, and uh, I think it worked out pretty well. Yeah, just going to paint the base black, and uh, that's that. Um, he's all done, and uh, this guy went off to a new home. And uh, I hope that you take these ideas and make something for your own haunt. Um, it was super fun. And look at that. We did the whole thing in 12 minutes. Of course, I have to remind you that if you're looking for cool special effects, projection effects, or props for your haunt, you should check out my site for Mr. Chicken's Prop Shop at chickenprops.com.